Thank you very much for the nice introduction. Hello, everyone. Um, me and my colleague, Andreas Matkins, will present you today a project at the cross-section of sociologist Harold Garfinkel's work and the uh, digital humanities uh, practices. And it's our title, Maze of Garfinkel. Um, I am a little bit short. I think I have to make something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Harold Garfinkel situated in his office. Uh, Harold Garfinkel is an influential sociologist whose work on social interaction has had a profound impact on various disciplines. Obviously, sociology, media studies, linguistics, anthropology, and many others. He is known for founding a methodology which turns sociology upside down. Instead of attempting to understand society through a conventional top-down approach, Garfinkel developed bottom-up methods to actively engage, describe, and analyze mundane everyday practices. His goal was to discover the things that persons in particular situations do, the methods they use to create the patterned ordinalness of social life. One particular challenge of engaging with ethnomethodology is its unique language. His studies are written in a difficult prose style with very convoluted descriptions to embody the complexities of everyday inter interactions. With Garfinkel, every word needs to be unpacked and described through multiple adjectives and long phrases. His language was discussed and criticized heatedly uh, by sociologists at a symposium, for example, in 1968. Garfinkel gave, uh, for example, this statement against language critics. What they missed was how the damn talk was tied into the thing he was doing as a feature of what he was doing. Now, maybe you cannot understand that, but that is what we insist on. Why it was a future of what he was doing? As Anne Rawls puts it, Garfinkel is arguing that objects don't just exist, they need to be accomplished. And the process of their accomplishment is what we are looking at. We have a language that threads parts of speech as standing in a referential relationship with epistemic objects. And you need to use that language in order to talk about the theory that says that no, they in fact don't have that ontological characteristics. So Garfinkel uses a lot of phrases as of which, the car for example, as a feature of the situation as of which it is a part. So the task of our project was to digitize and explore a sub-collection of papers from the Herod Garfinkel archive and to develop prototypical and innovative approaches to exploring such a collection. Today, we will show only one such approach, an approach in which we look, uh, took up the challenge to provide an access to his textual maze. So the sub-collection is on Garfinkel's occasion map studies. And occasion maps deals with maps which persons draw to instruct each other in situ, so on location maps drawn. Therefore, most of the papers consist of student experiments, drawn maps, other examples of instructed actions, and wayfinding journeys. It also includes heavily edited transcripts of Garfinkel's lectures and exercises. Here, for example, is an envelope sent by a student to Garfinkel and a transcript from a lecture which he heavily edited. So this is an overview of all the documents we have in our collection. And you can see early on in the 60s and 70s, there are mostly lecture notes and transcripts from the courses he gives on the topic and exercises by his students. And only later, up there in the 1990s, does he start to formulate and write down his research findings uh, in, an, in a series of ultimately unfinished and unpublished drafts. And we discovered that one particular draft from 1996, here in circled red, gives us the most detailed description of Garfinkel's ideas about this matter. And the draft starts like this, looks like that, uh, titled Notes Comparing Two Analytic Formats of Occasion Maps of Wayfinding Journeys, Documentary and Essentially Procedural. Yeah, so you can have a sense of how Garfinkel writes. I um, would like to show you this example. I'm not going to read everything, but uh, from the second reason why he calls occasion maps occasion maps, uh, he states, under that worksite condition, the maps consulted inspectable, relevant to the user properties of logic, order, meaning, factual adequacy, followability, completeness of instructions, sufficiency of instructions, notational clarity, analyzable format, methodic procedure, etc., are embedded in territorial and equipmentally affiliated practices of the traveling, and being so embedded are problematic, topical, salient, unavoidable, and identifying in relentlessly embodied territorial details of traveling's work and uh, so on, uh, 30 pages of it. Um, uh, these descriptors are not co coincidental uh, and uh, they get referred again later in different contexts. 
uh, to capture the dynamics of this language, what we did was meeting up with media studies professor Tristan Tillman and his students for data sessions over 60 hours, in which we broke down the text in its automatic parts. With graph database name 4 j we were able to express the interrelations between these automatic parts. Uh, resultant graph does not describe the grammatic or subordinate semantic relations, but expresses the text naively as how words relate to each other and hopes the meaning emerges through this maze, like Garfinkel hoped for with his intertextual poetry. Uh, title as an example would look like that. Two things, documentary and essentially procedural, uh, gets compared and they are analytic formats and it is off occasion maps, which is off wayfinding journeys. The same title looks in the A4J like this. Uh, you see here additional notes to show you the connectedness of introduced terms. And here's another example. I find it uh, quite interesting, actually. He, uh, he writes some words with an asterisk to use the word as an array to store a lot of attributes. I shall write orders spelled with an asterisk as a proxy for terms that are commonly used to speak of properties such as the maps, completeness, consistency, clarity, factual accuracy, omission, gaps, mistakes, errors. I think you get it. Um, and here we see how order with asterisk assembled on the right and on the left you see the uh, vertical co construction of the text. It is important maybe for later. With our work we were able to comprehend the vertical and horizontal structure of this argumentation. Although it is useful to have this graph expression, we discovered that uh, sequentiality of text gets lost in this approach because you can start to read anywhere. Therefore we needed to project this graph onto text and vice versa. So we've seen how the text for itself is too densely constructed to be digested in a linear reading. And we've seen how um, the graph makes it easy to see this maze of phrases that Garfinkel uh, makes. But this approach then, the graph approach, is disconnected from the textual content. So we developed the concept for an application that should allow us um, to link uh, the graph and the text. And we wanted it to basically able to query the graph from the text to navigate from graph node to graph node, and to visualize occurrences and distributions of terms, terms in the graph nodes, in the text. So we made this app. Um, this is a basically a web app, a TypeScript app. It uses um, Cytoscape.js uh, as a library to connect to the Neo4j database. And the text view on the right is augmented by a minimap on the far right, displaying the entire document. And when a node in the graph is chosen, occurrences of the respective term become highlighted in the text view and the minimap, revealing both the specific context of the term in the text and the overall frequency and distribution of the term in the whole um, document. And in reverse, it is possible to select any word or longer phrase in the text, and it will immediately be queried in the graph database, and the resulting graph fragment will be displayed. Note that there is no predefined TI markup for terms anywhere in this text. It just uses um, the string selected by the browser and queries that in the database. And then there are some filter options to select for different node types. Now let's look at a demo, which we recorded previously. So here, we highlight the phrase, the map's properties of order, and see the graph node containing that phrase and its connected nodes. Some of these nodes are different phrases that are semantically linked. Some are smaller phrases and words that make up this phrase. Here we take a closer look at just the map's properties. And we explore it in the graph view and see a whole other set of nodes appear relating to this phrase. This, this suggests that map's properties does not only occur here, but it is central. And we can see it occurring all throughout the first third of the text here in red. And let's explore further. We can see that there's a blue node. And this is a different node type. And to use Garfinkel's terms, a doing. So here it's traveling's work of reading the map. And we open it, and we see other blue nodes, so other types of doing. And in particular, here's the shorter phrase, work off, on the top there, which will be selected soon. And then you can see all the occurrences of work off in the text, and hopefully you can see all the blue dots appearing. It is uh, appearing often and all throughout the text. And in the first third, it appears often in occurrence and proximity to the previously selected phrase, maps properties. Um, so many other phrases contain uh, or link this short phrase work off. It, now we open it in the graph, and there you can see all the other phrases containing the phrase work off. And you can see it appearing all throughout the text. So to end the short demonstration, we've seen how by highlighting one phrase in the text, 
we could navigate through the graph to arrive at a central phrase in Garfinkel's language, and we can visually see its importance in the text and its relation to other phrases in the graph view. So to conclude, uh, like John Heritage puts it, ethnometodological studies are discussed in a difficult prose style in which dense tickets of words seem to resist the reader's best endeavors, only to yield at the last forceful and unexpected insights which somehow remain obstinately open-ended and difficult to place. Thank you very much. <laughs>